The manual dimension tools allow us to click and drag a line to dimension between objects. We can find the manual dimension tools by going to CAD Dimensions or by clicking the toolbar button with the yellow ruler icon. Using either technique will display the manual dimension tools in the tool palette. If we do not see the tool palette, select View Tool Palette to toggle its display. We'll start with the Manual Dimension tool. To use the Manual Dimension tool, activate it by clicking on the tool, then click and drag a line close to the objects we want to dimension. The tool will place an extension at the first object as a start point, and then we'll locate any other objects we drag across. The Manual Dimension tool will behave differently depending on what saved plan view we are in. For example, in the electrical plan view, the manual dimension will be following the electrical dimension defaults, which locate walls, CAD, and electrical. Whereas in the floor plan view dimensioned save plan view, the plan dimension defaults are used, which locate walls, openings, and CAD. We can control what objects the manual dimension tool will locate by reviewing the save dimension defaults for that plan view. Select Tools, Active View, Edit Active View, then go to the selected Defaults panel. We can see that Dimensions is the first in the list. Click the Pencil button to edit the selected default to review its settings. The Locate Manual panel in the Dimension Defaults controls the manual dimension baseline dimension, and running dimension tools. Also note that there are locate panels for the other dimension tools here as well. The second dimension tool is the end-to-end -to -end dimension tool. Click to activate this tool and again click and drag to draw a line close to the objects that need dimensioned. It will find the first two objects and place extension lines to each object. But as we move down the wall, it will move that second extension to the last snap point as we drag, moving to the next snap and the next until we stop, only ever having two extensions. We'll go back to the dimension tools and look at our angular dimension tool. This tool will dimension the angle between two objects. To use this tool, click and drag an arc between two non-parallel lines. If we click and drag the angle dimension to the opposite side of the pivot point of this angle, it will give the opposite angle's dimension. Another manual dimension tool is the interior dimension tool. By default, this tool will measure wall to wall across a room. Notice that the extension lines are going to the framing layer or main layer of each wall. This is determined by the dimension defaults in use for the saved plan view. For example, the Floor Plan View Dimensioned Save Plan View has the Interior Dimension tool locating the sides of the main layer of the walls. However, the Kitchen and Bath Saved Plan View locates the drywall surfaces of the walls. Next is the Point to Point Dimension tool. If we click and drag a line between two objects, the dimension line will snap to each of the objects and create a dimension line just like the manual dimension tool. However, we can also use this tool where there are no objects to snap to. Click and drag a line out away from the plan. Notice that this dimension tool will create its own points to snap to. We can see the point markers at each end of the dimension line. The point-to-point -point dimension tool is very flexible and a great tool for dimensioning items that are not normally dimensionable. However, the point-to-point -point dimension tool should be used sparingly. It is easy to forget that the point-to-point -point dimension tool requires you to be precise with your click and drag. The next dimension tool is the baseline dimension tool. This tool will create a series of dimension lines that all share the same origin instead of continuing from each previous location. Each dimension will be on its own line.
The running dimension tool is similar to the baseline dimension tool in that it produces multiple measurements from a single point of origin. It is different, though, in that these measurements display on the same dimension line rather than on multiple lines. A circle will display on the origin end of the dimension as a visual cue for the direction of the dimension line. The center line dimension tool will generate an extension line with a center line indicator on objects that are set by default to locate at their centers. You can control what objects this tool will locate in the Locate Center Line panel of the dimension defaults. The last tool under the Manual Dimension Tools is the Tape Measure tool. When we activate this tool and click and drag a line between two points or objects, we will see a temporary dimension number. But as soon as we release the mouse button, it will disappear. It will not leave a permanent dimension line in the plan. Like a tape measure, it will snap back when we let go. There are many dimension defaults because they work hand-in-hand -hand with saved plan views and section views. Each saved plan view has a dimension default that controls what objects the dimensions locate, the layer they're on, and how they display. Customizing them to fit your process can greatly improve your overall efficiency.